Holy Spirit, have your way. Mm. Holy Spirit, good morning wherever you are. In the United States of America, good morning, good afternoon wherever you are in Ghana. Good afternoon wherever you are in Europe. Yes, Lord. Today is another day. I normally don't come on Facebook live on Saturday, but the Lord placed a word onto my heart to share with you. So please, can you like this video? If you join, share. Share it to friends and family. God bless you for that. Share. Rishaka Brulize Kadadebe. Lisa Kadadabazi Kadadebe. Holy Spirit. Ah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way. Good morning, wherever you are. God bless you for joining the life. Shika Gurala Sakadaraba. Lisa Kadadabazi Kadadebe. Lasa Kadaraba Rika Brule Zekadarebe, Lizu Kuru, Risha Kadaraba Zekadarebe, Risha Kadaraba Lizek Kadarebe, Shikadawa Brili Zakadaraba, Lisa Kadaraba Zekadarebe, Lasha Kadaraba Zukuru Rika Bri, Lisa Kadaraba Zekadarebe. Risha Kadaraba Zekadarebe, Risha Kabru Lizekadarebe, Risha Kadaraba. Holy Spirit, have your way. Mm. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Risha Kadaraba Zekadarebe, Risha Kadaraba. If you join the live, please kindly like and share. God bless you. Kindly like and share, like and share, like and share, like and share, like and share. Tag it to friends and family. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's by His grace. It's by His grace. It's by His grace. If not by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we won't be alive. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, it's by the grace, it's by the grace, it's by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Risha Kabra, Liza Kadadaba, Rikabra. It's by His grace, it's by His grace. If not by His grace, who are we? Who are we? Yes, Sakadadaba, Zukudubu, Rikabra. Holy Spirit, have your way. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Indeed, we say you are God. There's no other God like you. Father, we have come to share your word. Through your word, let there be a deliverance and the power to manifest in the life of your children. We bless your name. Indeed, we say you are God. There's no other God like you, Father. Father, Lord, Lord, deliver your children from any power that is fighting against them and deliver them and let them know you more in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning once again. I'm here to share the word of God with you. So please kindly like the video and share it and i believe that by doing so you bless someone amen amen this morning i am teaching on 
a simple question and simple thought of people that they always think that um, so far as we are Christians and we put our trust in God, our everything in God, um, when it comes to marriage, God is right in a good position to get us our spouse. So this morning, the Lord was ministering to me and God asked me this same question. Do you think I'm right to choose your spouse for you? And that question came into my mind from the spirit. And I said, no, let me share this with my loved ones and my friends as well. So this morning, wherever you are, I'm preaching a message with the title, Does God Pick Your Spouse? Does God Pick Your Spouse? Believers, before I will go deep, deep into this question, we have to go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, as the Bible says that, and he who finds a, a, a wife finds a good thing. And this thing, this phrase, or this biblical wisdom from King Solomon has be on the lips of a lot of women, especially the Christian women, that yes, he or a man must look for a wife or must chase a wife. Yes, that is true. But people also put it in their mind that um, they are waiting for God to descend and tell them that you, woman, this particular man is your husband or this particular woman is your wife. But before that, let us look on to um, why does he who finds a wife obtain favor from the Lord? Wherever you are, I greet you, I salute you. Um, Evangelist Kimberly brings, God bless you. And um, Ren Ellis, God bless you. Christian, God bless you. Henrita, God bless you. God bless everyone that has joined the life this morning. So please kindly like and share. Please kindly like and share. He who, what, what, why, why, why does he who finds a wife obtain favor from the Lord. Before we understand, does God pick your partner or your spouse? We have to understand that that the book of Proverbs is featured in the Bible's wisdom literature and it contains practical guidelines and moral principles for developing sound character and making wise and beneficial decisions in life. So various topics are explored within Proverbs, including marriage and family. And one such tenet, tenet for wise men suggests that he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. It's important to understand that the proverbs are not meant as divine promises or guarantees listen again it is important to understand that the proverbs are not meant as divine promises or guarantees these maxims these maxims are general principles both positive and negative statement about wives appears in the book of Proverbs. For example, in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13, remarks that a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13 says that a quarrelsome wife is like the constant dripping of a leaky roof. 
You see, sometimes when it is rain and you have your, your roofing is leaked, when it is rain, you hear the, 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 the drip of, of, uh, from your leaky roof. Co, 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 you see? And also, when you come to Proverbs chapter 25, verse 24, Sagli warns that it's better to live on a corner of a roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. So the Bible in Proverbs, or further stressing the point, also in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 19 says that it is better to live in the desert Wow, it is better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and a nagging wife. So, on the other hand, a prudent wife is from the Lord, says Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13. So, we can be confident that in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, implies that he who finds a good wife obtain favor from the Lord. People of today normally quote this quote, but they forget they forget about the other ones, as the Bible says in Proverbs chapter twenty one verse nineteen that it is better to live in the desert than with a quarrelsome wife or uh, and, and a nagging wife. Wow! So the proverbs when we talk of marriages and family carries the positive and the worth. And the negative. Hallelujah. If you go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, confirms a wife of noble character is a husband's crown. But a disgraceful wife is like a decay, or is like decay in his bones. A disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. Believers. In the Hebrew, in the Hebrews, the wording of Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, is strikingly similar to that of Proverbs chapter 8, verse 35. For those who find me, eh, for those who find me, find life and receive favor from the Lord. So this verse, me, in this verse refers to wisdom suggesting that after wisdom itself the finest of god's blessings is an excellent wife the finest blessings from god is an what excellent what wife for those who finds me finds life and receive favor from the or from the lord and two things after finding wisdom itself from the Lord, you gain favor. You also find wife to gain what? Favor. Praise the Lord. So, as... So, so, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 11 more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with air for wisdom is more precious than rubies and nothing you desire can compare with air and uh, proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 also makes sorry my network is bad and um, my network is not stable in case um in case my network goes off, don't go, just stay on, I'll be back because I'm struggling, it is raining here. Sorry for that. So Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10 makes a parallel analogy. It says that a wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. So he who finds a wife obtains favor from the Lord. But the Inference is that not just any and every wife will bring favor 
from Yahweh. Not just what every wife will bring favor from the Lord. Listen to what Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes says, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Ecclesiastes, another biblical book of wisdom, literature, makes this point abundantly clear. The book, the book says that, I find more better than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap, and whose hands are things. I find more better than death, meaning that he is he's so comfortable with death than to be with a woman who is a snare, who is a trap, whose heart is a trap, whose hands are chains. So the Bible says that the man who pleases God will escape her. The man who pleases God will escape her. But the sinner, but the sinner, she will ensnare. And Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1, warns that the wise woman builds a house, but with her whole hands, the foolish one steers her down. A prudent, God-fearing wife is a treasure. An excellent thing for a man to find. So Proverbs 31, 10 to 31, elaborate on the blessings of a wife of noble character. This passage is an acrostic poem expolling, ex expolling the, the, the value of a virtuous wife. The poem's opening question emphasizes the rarity of a virtuous woman and implies that if a man finds such a wife for himself, he will have obtained or he will have obtained great favor from the Lord. For she is worth far more than rubies. So the woman described in Proverbs chapter 31 is trustworthy, capable, intelligent, diligent, generous, and kind, bring by entire household. So for these reasons, her children call her blessed and her husband praises her, saying, there are many virtuous and capable women in the, in the, in the, in the world. Do you understand? But you are or you surpass them all. So, Please, if you can't hear me, it is it is from the network, okay? So just exercise patience. If you can't hear me, it is, it is the network. Exercise patience. You will hear me clearly. So, above all else, this woman, or this is a woman who loves and fears the Lord. A man who finds a wife of such extraordinary worth most certainly obtain favor from the Lord. Now, back to our question. We've understood he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. We have to understand that women, there are um, negative women and positive women in the Bible. And they are the, um, the negative women are the quarrelsome as the Bible um, recorded in Proverbs. And, and, and the, uh, the good ones are the virtues. Now, the question for this one is, does God pick your spouse? You have probably heard Christians talk about how you should wait for the spouse God has for you or seek God's will in your love life. The idea of letting God choose who you marry and guide you to that person is properly and uh, properly 
among Christians. This is often because one, Christians want to obey God's will in their life. Two, believe that God knows the best possible match for them. So, however, in 1 Corinthians 7, paint a different picture. Instead of teaching us to expect God to control our love lives, the chapter reveals that God gives us freedom to choose if we marry and thus, thus whom we marry. Do you understand? So, it might seem hard to ask that God would want us to make such big decisions rather than yield them to him. Understanding why God gives us the choice becomes easier when we look through the lens of what I'm coming to say. Number one, God won't control our choice because love must be free. God would control our choice because love must be free. Number one, the reason why God does not pick our spouse for us is that God would control our choice because love must be free. When I say free, I don't mean without cost. I don't mean that. I mean and am not enslaved not enslaved love not i mean not enslaved love so love by its nature must be free and it's not i mean be enslaved so by its nature must be free or it's not love if you are not being free or that you are being enslaved it is not love do you understand so maybe you have heard the saying that you shouldn't take a robot to the prom because she doesn't really love you it means that anyone who is forced to love you doesn't really love you you can't really know if a person loves you unless he or she has the option not to. If it were God's will for us to marry a particular person, refusing would be disobedience. We would have to marry that person in order to obey god we would be accepting the person because we were required to because we had no other option so that would eliminate the opportunity to love freely and genuinely but god wants us to love freely and genuinely Hallelujah. Can you like this video and share it? So that's why God gave us freedom to choose if we marry and whom we marry. That freedom gives us space in which to love. Hallelujah. Number two, does God pick your spouse? God would control our choice because love is better than matching. God would control our choice because love is better than matching. Finding the right match is a popular idea in a modern America. It's a popular idea in the modern Europe, many people think a successful marriage is made by finding the right match. 
And that a failing marriage means the match was bad. But this is a backward way of thinking. Even the best of matches will experience conflict eventually. And even the best of matches can be ruined if conflict isn't handled well. Even we Christians fall into the trap of thinking too much of matching. Even worse, we bring God into it. Some Christians want God. Some Christians want God to pick their spouse because they think he, God, with his infinite knowledge, knows who his absolute best match is. Yes, I understand that. There are some marriages that has been ordained by God before even you were born, before even your mother and your father met. So divinely, God will make you meet that man or woman. Because those, this, those kind of people, God has a divine purpose for them in his kingdom, for his children. So there are particular people God has arranged in his creation that this person must this, meet this person. When they get married, this will happen to that, this will happen to that. Like, for example, when God instructed Hosea to go and marry the prostitute, do you understand? It was for a divine purpose. That is why God told Hosea to go and marry that prostitute. And God wants us to know that in his own infinite knowledge, he has made a people, not everyone, but some people, to get married. So never think that God, in his infinite knowledge, can make you pick a wife or a, a husband. There are people, they pray about the man or the man. And the devil uses that thing to, 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 to manifest certain things in their dreams and visions. And they later reject those people, they pray about them. Believers, it's as though we want God to be our supernatural matching algorithm. But God wants us to love rather than put our stock in matching. Matching is certainly important, but a more poorly matched couple that loves would do better than a well-matched couple that doesn't love. So God wants us to choose the love. God wants us to choose to love the person we commit in marriage rather than worry about how well we are matched. Regardless on how good a match we marry, God is present, teaching, encouraging us to love selflessly. Hallelujah. Number three, does God pick your spouse? Listen, God won't control our choice because to love is to be like God. God didn't have to choose us. He didn't have to love us. Listen carefully. He was free to reject us. He loved us in a way because God is love. Do you get it now? God is love. So God didn't have to choose us. 
he didn't have to love us. He was free to reject us. He loved us anyway because he is love. When God invites us to love others, he is inviting us to live the highest virtue that is essential to his nature. He is, invite, is, he, he is inviting us to become more like him. Loving our spouse with the same constant selflessness with which he loves us. Love is the choice to cooperate with God in serving your spouse. Love is the choice to cooperate with God in serving your spouse. Listeners, true love, the kind of love that keeps a couple together for a lifetime is not a feeling but an attitude. It says, with the help of God, I am going to do everything I can to enhance the life of my spouse. So when we imagine marrying someone God has picked for us, we often imagine a divinely blissful marriage marked by much joy and little trouble. While that seems appealing, it's, it, it's really not what God wants us to live out. He calls us to live out the, limit, the, the, the limitless love that is constant even when everything is falling apart. So, it's the love that says, I love you. I have chosen you. I am never leaving you. Come hell or high water. So that means that God is calling us to love our spouse the way he loves us. You get it right. Often, we want God to choose our spouse for us because that seems safer and easier than choosing to love someone without knowing how difficult or painful that will be. But God hasn't called us choose what's safe or easy. He called us to love Him and love others. So, one big way that happens is in freely choosing to commit to someone in marriage. This doesn't mean God abandoned us. Do you understand? It doesn't mean that God abandoned us to make our own choice. Not at all. God has not abandoned us to make our choice. So, to make our own choice without any help from Him. No. Like any, um, like any good father, like any good father, God will always give us guidance. He will guide you. Guidance and counsel in making a wise choice of a spouse. But God doesn't want to control our love and last adventure in committing to love someone for a lifetime. So in doing that or in doing so, we take the same adventure of love that it took when Hallelujah. So, God doesn't want to control our love lives. Instead, He wants us, He, he wants to invite us to take love's advantage in committing to love someone for a lifetime. 
in doing so, we take the same advantage of love that he took when he chose to commit to loving us. Although marriage rates have, have dropped, marriage rates have dropped in the past 20 years, in the past 10 years, among men and women, many people are still looking to tie the knot. Listen, paying attention, paying attention to recent trends in marriages may give you clues on how to find a wife with whom you can build a strong marriage. You can also improve your odds by searching your perfect wife or match in your daily lives. People of today think that there is no way of choosing spouse. But let me tell you, there are 16, there are 16 ways in the Bible. There are biblical 16 ways to find a wife according to the Bible. There are 16 ways to find a wife according to the Bible. Let me give you, if there's time, I, I'll, I'll, I'll list all the six things and you understand. Let me say this. Never think that if you are in Europe or you are in Africa or you are in America, it's so compulsory that if you're an European lady or European man, it's so compulsory that you need to get an European man or an European woman. Maybe your husband is in America, if you're in Europe, or if you're, an, if you're, if you're a European lady and you're, you're, and you're, you're a European lady, maybe your husband is in uh, um, America. And if you're an American man and you live in America, maybe your wife or your, your lifetime partner is in somewhere in Africa. Or maybe if you're in Africa and you, you are a man, your wife may be in Europe. So, there's, you can meet your wife or your life partner at any place. There are people, they meet their life partner on dating sites. There are a lot of dating sites. E-Amoni, Christian Dating, Cupid, There are a lot of dating sites that you can meet your wife or your life partner. There are rare people there. You can also meet your partner, your life partner, in a church. You can meet your life partner at a gathering, at a wedding, at a funeral, in the public, in a bus, at a mall, just on the street. But in, in some of the countries, some of the nations, because of this modernization, they want it specific that this man or this wife must be coming from this place. He or she must be this. He or she must be coming from that. But God did not program us like that. God did not create man as a robot. We, are, we, are, we were created to have a free will, a free choice, and a freedom to choose whatever we want to choose. So when you choose it, then you bring it to God. God, this is what I choose. Abraham did not pray to God for Eliezer the servant to go and choose a wife for his son Isaac. But there was a direction, there was a prophetic direction and some signs that made Eliezer went and chose Rebekah and brought her to Isaac. But yet, when you when you when you when, when you read the Bible. And you check the lifestyle of Rebecca. It is it was it was awful. How can a mother of two two children love one and hate one? It's unlawful. So you see, there are certain things that are our this modern ages we need to be very careful, no matter how we want to apply certain things. So number one. There are biblical ways of finding a wife, according to the Bible. Number one, in Deuteronomy chapter 21, 
verse 11 to 12 says that find an attractive prisoner of war bring her home shave her head trim her nails and give her new clothes then she's your wife when you go to war and you meet this kind of women at the war eh? they are in prison bring them release them bring them shave them clean them and let them be uh, i mean neat and she's your wife that is the first way number two determine chapter 22 verse 28 to 29 i don't have time to read all i'll just give you the expo expo and uh, expo so tree about it it says that lay hold on a virgin who is not betrothed to another man and no hair but afterwards pay a father a sum of money then she is your wife another way is that another way number three Uzziah chapter one verse one to three god told Uzziah to find a prostitute and marry her and so as he did if it was you and i we will say no but this this Uzia, eh, finding a prostitute was a divine guidance number four exodus chapter 2 verse 60 to 21 says that find a man with seven daughters mm. find a man with seven daughters and impress him by watering his flocks then he will marry you you see number five root and was root chapter 4 by 5 to 10 purchase a piece of property and get a woman as part of the deal and was got married to root should i continue should i continue okay number six judges chapter 21 verse 19 to 25 go to a party and hide when the woman comes out to dance grab one and carry her off to be your wife just imagine eh? just imagine you are you are you are at a party and all of a sudden a man comes into the party and grab you take you by force put you uh, at the back of the horse ride you um, to a different place then you become uh, uh, his wife is 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 that is so it, it, it is so simple in the old days it is so simple to 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 marry to choose your partner but our modern world of today the they have created their own method of ways and uh, because of what they've went through and do you think that those people in the old days they really went through a lot of things Uzia married the prostitute i forget her name Uziah married a prostitute. Do you think that it was so easy? It wasn't easy. But Uziah didn't give up. He even told God, God, I'm not going to marry this girl again. This woman again. But God insisted, go and marry her. Do you understand? Genesis chapter 21, verse 19 to 24. Have God created a wife for you whilst you sleep? Note. This will cost you a ring. When Ab Adam slept, God took his ring and created a wife for him. That's another way. So, ladies of today, are we going to tell God to tell a man to, to sleep to, so that when the man sleeps, God will remove the rib and create a, a man for you, a wife for you? No. So it is a lot. It's a lot. I remember in the Bible where is it second somewhere where David took Abigail as a wife. Hmm? This is the point that we have to understand that God does not pick your spouse. God has not been for a spouse. God is a God that has given us a choice. So we need 
to choose whatever we want. Just you need God's guardians' prayers to support whoever you have chosen. No age and um, no one's name has written on a man's forehead or in a woman's forehead that this is your wife, this is your husband, but it's you that you choose. Believers. So obviously, this list I will continue and continue and continue to mention it. But we have to realize that the Bible does not speak to every issue we face in life. Just ask King Solomon. You can ask King Solomon. Solomon, who had to use wisdom when the two prostitutes came to him claiming to go be the mother of one child. We must follow those things that God has given us. In all of our relationships, we have the obligation to exercise the fruit of the Spirit and not to mistreat anyone. That is especially true for a prospective spouse. We also have the clear biblical command that a Christian is free to marry whomever he or she chooses. So long as the prospective mate is in the Lord. But in the ending, choosing a spouse calls for wisdom. The Bible does not give us a specific means by which we can find spouses. Some might, some, some might, might be introduced by families or friends or using the social media some might cultivate a letter writing relationships as i said in social media in some cultures the thought of dating or courting is out of the question i believe that there are so many ways in meeting your partner so don't frustrate yourself don't be confused don't be so perplexed whereby you might think that you've met a man you've met a woman is she the right is he the right and you'll be confused god god will not come on earth he will not come in a human being form to give you this or wife or this husband Friends can introduce you to someone, family, social media, going to church, wherever you find your place. Only if you have love. And people also expect that, no, the man or the woman have met, we need to have the same match. What is match? We must have things in common. What is things in common? You drink an alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. It doesn't stop me not to marry you. But the question is, are we going to marry on equal yoke? If you are going to marry on equal yoke, then you need to be very careful. But if you are marrying on equal yoke, whereby you think, by the help of the Holy Spirit, you can convert the person from his or her uh, ungodliness life to bring the person into Christ then you have a whole year to work on and by the power of the Holy Spirit to help you. So we should note that in, in its collectively history, the church has never, or the Bible has never addressed um, any ways and means to meet a wife or a spouse and, and God is going to choose for you. And he, God, with his infinite knowledge and is he made this solomon he made solomon to write this that he who finds listen to what the bible say he who finds the bible did not say if god finds you a wife you uh, you, you 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 find a good thing and obtain favor he said he who finds so someone must go and pick Someone must go and search. A man must go and search. Woman, if you're also interested in a man too, 
you can approach. Can I shock you in the Bible? Can I shock you in the Bible? Solomon said in the Song of Solomon, it says that he is he is like a tree in Lebanon. Meaning that Shunammite was saying that Solomon like a tree in Lebanon. So she 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 she, she was interested in what Solomon, one of Solomon's concubines or wife. Do you understand? So it has been a norm or a culture that and a woman must not approach to a man. You can do that in a, in a nice way, in a, respect, a respectful way. It doesn't stop anything. It doesn't change you, the person. It doesn't change your identity. It doesn't change God. It doesn't collect any money from you. It doesn't destroy anything from you. But when you have the love, not the match. Do you understand? So God bless you. God keep you. May you get this wisdom every day that may the Lord, may the Holy Spirit help you and to meet the right person and have the right choice and be happy in marriage. There are a lot of men that have been in marriages, one, two, three, and they say they are not married again. There are a lot of women, the same thing. That shouldn't stop you not to marry again. Only if you don't want to marry. But if you want to marry, doesn't matter who comes for you, who comes to choose you. It doesn't matter the person where he or she is coming from. But what matters is, does this person really know God? Does he know the maker that I worship? That is most important. And I believe that by choosing or by having that kind of mindset, God will also help you to reveal everything about the man, about the woman, the one they are going to marry, and everything with transparency. Hallelujah. Believers, may the Lord bless you. May the anointing be more upon you. He said to Jeremiah, call me and I will show you things that you don't know. Anytime you call on to God, God will show you things. Pray and pray, pray over it. Don't just pray only once. Don't just pray only twice. And that is all. Once prayer doesn't give anything. Pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. I believe that God will bring the right woman in your life. The right man in your life. Good morning. Thank you for joining the Facebook Live. My name is Apostle Father Emmanuel Bukai. I am not feeling well, but I thank God that I'm able to come and sit before you people. For God gave me the privilege to preach unto you. And I believe that you take this message, take it seriously, and your life will be blessed. And also, let your support keep coming for the PA system, for the evangelism to come. And uh, we are putting this in order. We still need your help. We still need your help. The money is enough. At least we need another $500. The last time our lovely viewer supported us with $100 and God bless her. And we still need your help, please. Those that are watching, those that watch, we still need your help. It can twenty dollars, fifty dollars. It doesn't mind. We can, we can, we can. I mean, bring them together. A eh? little drop, little drop of water, makes it a mighty ocean. So the little thing that you give, we will we'll keep it till we get what we want to buy the um, PA system. Also, if you want to sow a seed to support the ministry, to bless the man of God. Uh, you can get my cash app on my video description. If you need any prayers or marriage counseling or any counseling, you can count on me. Contact me on my Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. Have a beautiful day. Enjoy your Saturday. Peace. Shalom.